All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started as I continue to let people in the room. Um, and uh, welcome everybody for joining us today uh, for our Explore SDSU and the, the School of, of Journalism and Media Studies specifically for uh, what you're here for today. Let me just do a quick introduction of myself and uh, two other people who are joining me from the school today. My name is Temple Northup. I am the director of the School of Journalism and Media Studies. This is actually my first year as the director. Uh, so I have uh, spent about the same amount of time actually on campus as probably many of you, uh, which is to say, just a couple days because uh, we're all working from home. Uh, but I'm really excited to be here and I'm excited to be here with you all today uh, because th this is to me one of the top schools uh, in the country when it comes to the things that we study and what we major in. And so, uh, you know, I'll tell you all about the degrees, um, I'll highlight some of our alumni just so you can get a sense of where our graduates go. Uh, and then there'll certainly be lots of time for questions um, that you may have about the program. But let me uh, just so you know who else is with me today. Uh, let me have Alexa uh, introduce herself and then Lourdes. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexa Mokalis, and I am the undergraduate advising coordinator for the School of Journalism and Media Studies. So I would be your major advisor is what they call it here at San Diego State. So I would be working with all of you for the four or two years that you're here, depending on how long you're with us at SDSU. Um, and in addition to being the undergraduate advisor, I'm also a lecturer. I teach in the advertising track here in the School of JMS. And um, I've been with JMS since 2012. I was an under or a master's student in 2012. And then I started teaching in 2014 and I've been here ever since. So super excited to meet you all. Um, love the prospect of you all becoming JMS Aztecs and I look forward to hopefully working with you. Lourdes, if you can introduce yourself. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Temple. Um, very nice being here and welcome all to the School of Journalism and Media Studies. I'm an assistant professor in journalism and I'm also uh, a bit new. This is my first year, but I'm very happy to uh, meet you and talk to you about the courses that I teach. I also coordinate the bilingual program. We're increasing our offer of classes and that are bilingual in English and Spanish, but we can talk about that later. So uh, welcome again. Thank you, Lourdes. And so I encourage anybody, if you have questions as we go, um, you should be able to unmute yourself uh, or you can put them in chat. Um, and Alexa and Lourdes, if you notice that I, there's a, something in chat, feel free to just jump in and, and ask the question or, or answer it, because um, I'll be sharing my screen and I don't know if I'll see the chat when I'm doing that. And so let me just jump into a fairly quick uh, overview of the school and just everything that, that we're doing here. So hopefully uh, you uh, have on a screen. Uh, welcome future Aztecs, because that is what you all are. Hopefully, if you're here, you are pretty committed. Um, and I think if you're not committed yet, uh, after everything that I know SDSU has lined up for you, and, and hopefully when you hear a bit more about the school, you'll be totally committed. So let me go through the program. So first, when we think about where to start, I think it's important to start about what is the vision and the mission for the School of Journalism and Media Studies. And so here's the, the vision, and you can see it on the screen, but let me read it because I think it's really important that you understand some of uh, what's most important to us uh, in our school. So our, our vision is the School of Journalism and Media Studies envisions a global society where citizens are engaged in their communities, where media professionals are ethical and committed to diversity and inclusivity and embrace technology to serve the public good, and where people from all backgrounds think critically about the media. And our mission is to prepare students for that society we envision while modeling today the values of community engagement, ethical professionalism, diversity in a global world, critical reflection, and in technology in service of the public good. And so that's 
a lot of key concepts there that I think are important to understand, but some of the ones that I'll just highlight is first, you'll notice the idea of public good. That is at the core of what we are and what we believe in, and that's in the DNA of our courses and our faculty, is what, regardless of your major, whether you're journalism, public relations, advertising, we believe that media can be used for the public good. And so that's kind of one of our fundamental beliefs. And, and tied to that is this commitment to diversity, inclusion, equity through the media, both uh, and for our students and our faculty. And so that's another really important belief of ours um, is this idea of inclusivity because that's tied to public good. And related to this are our five core values that we've developed. And so let me just highlight each of those. So the first is to engage with the community. We are a school of media. All of our, our majors are, are designed uh, to be able to be professional communicators, regardless of the field. And part of that is a recognition that we need to engage the community. We don't want to be isolated. We don't want to be just on campus. We want to be actually out in the world engaging with people, whether the community is here in San Diego, whether it's across the border or whether it's across the world, we're engaged with people. The second core value is that we're communicating ethically and professionally. Uh, those, I think, if there are criticisms laid against any of our fields, it's often that people don't feel there's uh, ethics in fields or that people are being professional. So that's one of our core values is that when we're training the next generation of storytellers, we want them to be ethical storytellers and we want them to behave and act professionally at all times. Our third core value is to understand global diversity. And I think it's easy to understand, especially with being a border city, the, the importance of understanding diversity, um, but really understanding it from a global perspective. Uh, just as an example of something we've been talking about this year uh, is migration and immigration. And so, again, being on a border city, that's an important thing to talk about. But we tried to add context and deeper understanding about migration, because when we think about the border here, we think about people from Mexico coming into the US, but those people aren't just from Mexico, they're from South Asia, they're from Africa. And so understanding uh, the diversity of the world and how it's interconnected and how we as storytellers need to understand that global diversity. Our fourth one is to think and reflect critically. Again, just at a, even a society level, if we're gonna think about what are problems and challenges that we face, I think not thinking and reflecting critically is probably one of those common themes we can see, whether it's politics or in the media or just interacting with your neighbors. Uh, and so that's something we really want to develop. We have courses that are primarily focused on that idea of developing critical thinking skills uh, and the ability to reflect on that. And then the last core value is just the idea of embracing technology to serve the public good. And I've talked about that again, but just to highlight it is not just that we're serving the public good, but that we're investigating the use of technology of how can we use that to serve the public good. We're a much more connected world. And so whether we have classes on social media to more traditional broadcast, we're thinking about how has technology changed and how are we able to use that in order to tell our stories in order to impact and affect change or to impact the public good. So that's a, a quick overview of some of this, the fundamental beliefs that drive what we do in the school and, and our values that shape all of the decisions we make when we're looking at adding courses or hiring faculty, we really want people to believe in our mission and our vision for what we're doing uh, for our students. A little overview of our students uh, and our school. We've got about 600 undergraduate majors in the school. We're among the highest impaction criteria. And in a second, I'll ask uh, Alexa to sort of explain what's impaction criteria for me not being from San Diego State. I didn't know what that meant when I got here. So it's an important thing to understand. 
but we have graduation rates that are much higher than campus on a whole. Um, very successful at graduating students in four years for those who come uh, as first year students or two years for those who have come as transfer students. Uh, so we're very proud of uh, the way we've designed our curriculum to make sure students really move through it. Uh, we have very distinguished faculty. So we have 15 full-time faculty and 21 part-time faculty. Uh, and it's a mixture of those who have PhDs like Lourdes and myself, Alexa, who's got a master's um, and has more professional experience. Uh, Lourdes also has professional experience, but we really uh, try to take a holistic approach to understanding as a school of media, we're training media professionals. So we need to have people who are, who are really out there actively working in the media right now to, to instruct our students, but we also want people who are, are there to think critically and to think deeply and to conduct research about some of these things that we're talking about. And uh, a last little bullet point is just that we really have developed um, a lot of cutting edge curriculum. And we'll talk about some of our example courses here in just a little bit, but things like using augmented reality in advertising. That's a class that we've developed. Uh, we've, of course, have a lot of classes focused on social media uh, and digital media. And so we really try to be aware of what's going on in the marketplace because we wanna train our students so that when they graduate from us, they're ready for any job from that very first day. And at the same time though, even though we're focused on technology, we're also maintaining our fundamental commitment to things like really solid writing, which is probably the most important thing that we teach. So let me stop for one quick moment to uh, invite Alexa just to talk for a moment about um, what it means to say that we're an impacted uh, major. Yeah, thank you very much. So many of the, almost all of the majors at San Diego State are impacted majors. And what that means is that there is some criteria that you will have to meet in order to enter into the major. So, um, and again, this is most programs on campus. There are a couple of majors that don't require it where you declare the major and you're automatically in. Um, but most majors on campus, because SDSU is a very popular university to attend, there are more students who want the major than there are seats available. Now that sounds scary and don't panic because all of you, um, if you've been admitted to San Diego State, if you're coming, you've already done the hard work of getting into San Diego State, kudos to you. Um, but, or if you're thinking about getting into San Diego State. Um, but yeah, so most majors on campus are impacted. When we say we have the highest, among the highest impaction criteria on campus, what that means is that we're prestigious. We're a prestigious program and we have high standards. And I don't know if Dr. Northup is going to speak about our accreditation, but we have a national accreditation that holds us uh, as faculty and our students to certain standards that we have to meet in order to fulfill those accreditation requirements. Um, so we have among the highest impaction criteria on campus, that means that we have one of the highest GPA requirements. So again, that's that prestige and people in the field, professionals in the field know that prestige. They know what is required of JMS students when they enter into the major. So they know that they can expect that incredible level of excellence when they enter into the field, when they graduate. So, you know, physics, for example, physics major on campus, we have a, actually have a higher graduate, um, a higher GPA requirement than physics majors. So the point is with impaction, it's not just JMS, it's most programs on campus. Um, there is going to be some criteria, whether it's a GPA, for us, there's gonna be a certain test that you'll have to take to move from a JMS pre-major to a JMS upper division major. So that's what impaction is. I don't know if anyone has any questions, I'm sure we'll review our pre-major requirements, but basically you have to take a couple of steps take certain classes, meet a certain GPA requirement in order to enter into the major. And most programs at SDSU are impacted, but we have certain prestigious requirements um, that set us aside from other programs in journalism, advertising, professional um, kind of media studies and public relations. Um, and that's what makes us special. Awesome, thank you, Alexa, for that. Uh, overview of what it means. And we will get to um, the pre-major courses or, or kind of an, an overview of, of what that means, as those are the courses you take to get into the major. 
So um, a little bit about our teaching and some of those core classes. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a mixture of faculty uh, with different backgrounds. And what that means is we have some who focus really more on those practical skills. Um, how do you use Adobe Premiere to edit videos or, or something like that? And then there's some more theoretical principles, which includes things like media law and media ethics, where we're engaged with that, that deep thinking that is so important for anyone who's in, uh, gonna work in the media industry. Now, here are some of our core classes. We have two required writing classes that every, every JMS student must take because we really believe that writing is one of the ways that we uh, distinguish ourselves from, from just any other major on campus, is we want to have students who know how to write. Uh, well, obviously, I'm going to be focused on media careers as we're talking about here, but we really could have done alumni who have nothing to do with media, who've gone on into to successful careers as lawyers, doctors, anything really, because we're training people People to think critically and be really strong writers. And that's something that, that can take you anywhere you want. Uh, and so that's a big part of who we are, are those writing courses. Then we have a number of, of required courses that look at the media as a whole, uh, then a, a required under a pre-major course on social media, and a new course um, that won't be here next year, but the following, that's a required class, thinking at different representations found in the media. So it's a, a course related to diversity and, and inclusion. And those are all required. Uh, those are the some of the required courses to get into the major. So there are four required courses. And so as Alexa mentioned, you have to have a B, a 3.0 in those courses in order to get into our major. And then once you are in, there's still more, uh, some of our core classes. There's one on principles of design. That's that's a really important skill, regardless of, of the field you're interested in, is to understand some of those ideas, uh, whether it's graphics uh, or videos, uh, some of those just principles behind how do you create engaging content. Uh, there is that media law and ethics class, uh, and then a research class, uh, and some are specific to the major, but all majors include uh, a recognition that it's important to understand how to do research, um, which is both uh, has an applied element, but then it's also just part of that, that critical thinking of how do you ask questions and how do you find answers to those questions. And one of the things that we're really proud about is this idea of that we have guaranteed seats for all of our required courses. And what that means is if you can be, if you get that B average in our four courses and you pass the uh, spelling and grammar test to get into the school, then you have guaranteed seats. So that means you will graduate on time as long as you're doing what you need to do you will graduate in four years or two years. And so that's just a, an important thing to know. I know as parents, you probably would like to hear that, that you're not gonna spend an extra year or semester on campus, saves you money. Uh, but that's one of the things, and that's part of that accreditation, which I'll talk about here in a second, is uh, small classes, and we just need to make sure our students are getting through those classes. As Alexa mentioned, we are accredited. Um, we started that back in 2009 is when we earned it and we were reaccredited in 2015 um, and we're up for accreditation this year, uh, but that actually is now it's been delayed a year so it will be next year when they actually come and visit uh, and it's it, it is a big deal it takes a lot of work to get this done. There are about 120 accredited programs in the entire world. So it is definitely exclusive. Uh, there are only a couple in, in each state. And so we're part of a small group of schools that meet these standards. And it's, uh, you know, it's looking at curriculum, it's looking at class size, it's looking at who's teaching classes, what are the qualifications for the faculty, what's the support from the university of the program. Uh, there, there are many different elements, there are nine standards that we must meet, uh, and we create a, a 300 page report uh, before they even get here, explaining how we meet each standard. People from other universities come for a multiple day visit. It's, it's a really large process. But with that, it does come a, a certain degree of prestige because you recognize that the students who come through here have a certain rigor. You know, we have to cap many of our classes at 20 students. 
So you're not going to get when you're when you're taking especially your skills class, if you're learning how to be a photojournalist, you're not going to have a photojournalist class with 50 students in it where you're just one of a number that's going to be capped at 20. So many of our classes are capped at 20. So that's that personal experience, which is part of why we we limit the number of majors we have. Um, and there are other things. There are national prizes um, that uh, are sponsored by different organizations that only accredited programs can participate. Uh, and, and there are internships that open up because of this accreditation. So it is a big deal. It's a lot of work uh, as we're headed into it right now. It's one of those things that is uh, consumes a lot of my time, but it's worth it for the students uh, because it really does mean a lot um, in, in terms of what kind of education you're getting. We also have many different collaborations across the uh, campus um, and around the world, uh, but some of the ones I'll just mention, especially if you're going to be a first year student, we have a residential learning community. Uh, so if you want to live in the dorms, uh, there's a specific community of people who are interested in our school. Um, you'll take a special class uh, together, which is taught by me next fall, um, that's uh, tied into one of our other required classes. Um, and, and so it's a really great way to start building a network, start getting connected to the school from a very early time. Um, so I know the students who do that tend to be really uh, highly successful. We have some other initiatives. We have a bilingual media uh, writing initiative, which Lourdes will talk about um, when we get to the journalism major. Uh, we have different areas of excellence. Excellence. We're part of a digital humanities initiative. Uh, we have a digital social media research collective, uh, a center for science and media, and uh, something called the Glim Broom Center for Professional Development and Public Relations, which is a, a very major uh, center that we started uh, a few years ago, but they have public lectures. There actually is a fellowship uh, program that you can go through that, um, and it's and it's related to uh, those who are interested in PR. So that's just a, a brief uh, indicator of how we're not just isolated on campus, but we're connected through many different fields and many different programs um, and initiatives. So let me tell you a little bit about our academic programs. We have four majors that you can uh, participate in. There's advertising, journalism, media studies, and public relations. Uh, and we'll talk about each one of those in just one second. But then we also have various minors. Uh, we have a minor in digital and social media. That's primarily for non-majors. Um, that doesn't require uh, some of our small classes. Uh, we have an international media certificate uh, where you take a specific group of some of our courses related to international, uh, either advertising and journalism. Uh, and we have a minor in learning design and technology. And I'll show you some of the what they learn in that uh, that minor uh, here in a few moments. So let me start. Uh, we'll do this alphabetically so I don't show any preference for one major over the other uh, with advertising. And Alexa can, can speak a little bit about this uh, in particular because she teaches. And in addition to being our advisor, she also teaches in our advertising sequence, um, some of the most popular classes. Uh, but advertising students, they learn how to be advertisers, right? That's uh, they learn whether it's copy, they learn in design, uh, they learn how to use um, all different types of platforms, whether it's traditional billboards, television uh, ads to, you know, paid searches, uh, you know, creating stories on Instagram or TikTok, whatever the case may be. And so they are able to develop these strategic thinking skills to think about what's their product, who's their audience, and then create advertising campaigns in order to reach that audience. And here are just a few classes uh, that I pulled out to represent some of the different things that we do, such as advertising strategy and digital analytics. Uh, there's the AR and VR and advertising class that we developed a few years ago, and then international advertising. And Alexa, I don't know if you wanted to speak for a moment about uh, some of what, what you might learn in advertising. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You summarized it perfectly, but just to kind of add to that. So yeah, our advertising majors, the goal is to teach you how to persuade an audience. And that looks different depending on the platform, depending on the brand, the company, the organization. But you'll learn everything from the history of advertising. Um, we'll talk about Mad Men, the series. You'll learn all of the different mediums of advertising, like Dr. Northup said, the more traditional modes, as well as the most um, 
the most current modes and platforms like TikTok, Instagram stories, Facebook Live, et cetera. I myself teach a class on advertising strategy and social media. So we go through everything from how to create um, effective Facebook presence, if that's your platform for your audience, to I'm, I have to change my lecture every semester to talk about TikTok or um, to talk about ephemeral content, Snapchat, Instagram stories, Facebook Live. So you'll learn kind of the, the very, the most fundamental elements of advertising, how to create a message, how to persuade, color theory, and then you'll learn kind of the more tactical, practical, applicable skills, again, founded in theory, but how do we create a message for our audience, whether our audience is Generation Z, whether it's millennials, whether it's baby boomers, our parents and grandparents. Um, and we have some really amazing classes that, again, speak to those really tactical, practical skills because we want you to go and be marketable in the field. So how to use Google Analytics, how to use Facebook Insights, how can we implement you know, virtual reality, augmented reality within a advertising campaign. And then you'll end your kind of career in the advertising track with how to create a full-fledged advertising campaign. So you'll have a company, you'll have to do a presentation, the whole kind of nine yards. But along the way, you'll do, you know, you'll take an advertising research class, you'll learn how to do consumer surveys, you'll learn a little bit of Photoshop, how to create infographics, how to create, you know, persuasive, effective advertising copy. So we cover you on all bases. And there are often um, students who ask, well, what's the difference between a marketing major and your major, your advertising major? And they go hand in hand. And so we see a lot of our ad students who minor in marketing, and that is like a perfect kind of blend because the marketing majors are going to be a little bit more kind of business math centric, whereas we will be more writing and creative centric. So if that was a question that anyone was curious about, I wanted to answer that because that is a question I get asked frequently as the advisor. Um, so if you were interested in advertising versus marketing, they go hand in hand. We often do see our students minor in marketing and that's kind of a really effective way to um, get yourself ready for the field because you have all of that great writing, you have the great writing skills, the, strate the strategic skills, you have the creativity skills, but then you also have a little kind of business, business mindedness as well. So yeah, I hope that's helpful. I would love to have you in the advertising track. So come take a class with me if you can. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alexa. And I'll just answer another question um, and, and add on to what Alexa said, because there are three programs um, at SDSU that are related in some way. So we're the School of Journalism and Media Studies, uh, where there's also the School of Communication, and then there's marketing within Fowler, the business school. And so first conceptually, if you think about communication, which underlies all of these, I would say there's an uh, communication can be seen as both an art and a science. So if we think about the art side, it's how do you create effective messages? How do you connect with your audience? How do you, uh, you know, tell a really good story? That's what we do. And then there's a science, which is really getting into numbers and analytics in a very technical way. That's what marketing does. And we teach some of those numbers, but if you really want to go deep into understanding that, marketing is, is the way to go. And that's where our, our degrees really go well together. And then in terms of the School of Communication, I, I like to say if we were going to maybe name the schools even more accurately, we'd be the School of Media and they would be the School of Human Communication. Uh, so if you look at their courses, there's a lot of communication theory and it's a lot about interpersonal communication um, and you know, understanding some of those more human dynamics, whereas we're looking at more at mass communication. And if you look at different colleges and universities around the country, which I'm sure you have, you'll see that there are many programs where there'll be a school of communication that has journalism and advertising and things like that. There'll be some that'll be colleges of communication. So there are a lot of different ways that you can divvy up these majors. And that's just how we have it here, is we can think about us or people who are primarily interested in media or digital media careers. And the School of Communication is much more interpersonally focused. 
But let me quickly uh, just get through the rest of our majors. And then, of course, any more questions, uh, you're welcome to ask away. And I know Alexa and Lourdes are doing great at answering some of those as well in the chat as they come up. So here, just uh, for each area, I just pulled four uh, semi-random uh, alums just to show you the the number of different alumni we have uh, in really interesting positions. So we have somebody who works at Oculus doing marketing uh, there. We have the chief marketing officer for the for the NFL. We have somebody who does the social media for Disney, uh, and we have a global brand president for Vans. So those are all advertising uh, focused careers and all who came out of our program. And so they're all doing interesting things in the digital media uh, advertising sphere. Next, we've got journalism. So this, of course, is focused on telling stories, um, communicating to the public, um, and providing that really important information that they need to make decisions about their life, whether it's local, international, uh, whatever the case may be, we're really trying to train that next generation uh, of journalists. And I'll, I'll invite Lourdes, who's one of our journalism faculty, uh, to perhaps talk about some of those, um, and I'll put uh, just a few of the careers. Uh, this is a slide that Lord has made uh, for me this morning about some of the different types of things that that journalists do. So if you want to speak for a moment about uh, the journalism degree. Thank you, Temple. The, the first thing that I want to say about the journalism degree is that, as uh, Temple mentioned earlier in, in his presentation, we are really focused on um, helping you become a journalist that produce uh, reports that are um, inclusive, that are really related to the needs of your community and that it's contextual, that it's really centered on your community. And so those are very important things that are at the top of our priorities. And after that, um, we uh, really try to get with the, with, you know, with the developments in the field and so you're going to be trained for the most important things that are writing and you, you're going to be able to fit in any traditional mainstream uh, newsroom. But we're also working um, uh, to help you and give you the skills that you need for everything that is being open now uh, because of the digital environment. And so he mentioned, for, for instance, entrepreneurial uh, journalism. So there is a specific class that will teach you uh, you know, what are uh, the things that are um, going on now, how you can uh, start a, a company that is not necessarily news centered, but is related uh, to news and to media. And so there, and there are other things like, of course, um, you can already uh, imagine through uh, Alexa's uh, talk that social media is present in every, uh, almost in every class. Uh, even if we're not teaching something that is not social media related, we try to add that as a component because we have to train you, you know, and, and how to use social media maybe as, so, as a source for your reporting, but also as a way to engage with your community, as a way to promote your, um, your content. And so it's, it's an par important part of the core. And uh, I... I uh, to try to have that list of career opportunities for journalism because that sometimes is, is, is students uh, think about journalism but they don't necessarily see all the you know the uh, opportunities that are out there so you can see for instance analytics specialists digital strategists and uh, things like that we are going to help you get those skills um, the other thing that I want to uh, add is that uh, uh, the school has been doing uh, an important effort to incorporate uh, Spanish speaking professors. And so we have this uh, program, the bilingual program, and uh, that right now we offer two courses. Uh, it's media in Latin America and then writing for Spanish language and Latinx media. Uh, but we are going to continue to offer more uh, uh, courses that help uh, prepare bilingual and bicultural journalists. Because we are on the border, uh, it's important for us to be aware of how we can serve our communities. 
And in, in, with that goal in mind, we're also trying to develop more courses. For instance, we just applied for a grant that is going to uh, uh, allow us to teach a course uh, about media, uh, uh, global migration and media. And we're, going, we're partnering with a university in Colombia, Universidad de la Sabana. And if we get that approved, that means that we're going to be able to take our students uh, for a short period, but to be able for them to experience how immigration is happening in Colombia and how the press over there covers that immigration. There's a big phenomenon there with the immigration uh, from Venezuela. And, and we are ha having a, the same uh, situation here, but the, it, it's similar, but at the same, it's different because our media systems are a little bit different. Our reporters might have different routines and norms. And so we want to explore all of that. And what, that's the a critical thinking part that we want to provide to our students. So there's a lot of opportunities for you in this, in this school. Yes, thank you, Lourdes. And, and here are just, a, again, a sample of alumni. Uh, we have somebody in, working in the Miami Herald, a very traditional reporter uh, up in, the, in San Francisco, the NBC weeknight news anchor is one of our alums. So if you're interested in broadcast, uh, we have somebody, uh, one of our younger alums who's working in digital uh, space for the Voice of San Diego, and then somebody who's actually doing the design work for the New Yorker in New York. So we've got alumni all over the country working in different areas of journalism. Uh, I'm going to try because I see the time and I want to make sure we have uh, enough time for all your answers. I'm going to give quick overviews of our remaining majors, uh, but you can certainly uh, ask questions uh, as you want. So the media studies major, um, this is often for somebody who's really interested in digital media in particular, who maybe isn't sure, do I want to be a PR person? Do I want to work um, in advertising? Do I want to be a journalist? Come to media studies. It's actually, uh, yeah, I wasn't supposed to play favorites, but it's one of my favorites uh, because uh, it really combines that sort of critical thinking with applied skills. Uh, you can see some of the classes um, such as media and sexuality, uh, media and identity, where you're really thinking critically about some of the media messages. But then they also have uh, like that radio and the digital age where you're creating podcasts. Uh, you're looking at and exploring really innovative tools. And so if you're somebody who just wants to play with some of these new media technologies and thinking about how you create the messages, I think media studies is a really appealing um, uh, major for you. And you could see just some of our alumni, we have a CEO of SDN Digital, which is a sports marketing uh, that focuses on, on digital brands. Uh, somebody who does uh, search engine optimization for, our, for a company up in LA. Uh, somebody who works for Intuit, uh, specifically on like TurboTax, so user experience. So how it asks all the questions and things like that. That's somebody uh, who, who's one of our alumni. And then even people like Stormy, who's up in Las Vegas, uh, who is a sports reporter and also like the ringside host for their hockey team. Uh, she's, she's good, has a big digital presence and, and was one of our majors. Our last major I'll mention is public relations. Uh, so this is one uh, another one of our just truly prestigious programs where they get a lot of hands-on experience at figuring out how do we create um, you know, messages, how do we segment our audience, how do we tell our stories, whether it's a brand, whether you as, you as an individual, how do you tell your story? Um, and, and they get a lot of really hands-on experience um, creating campaigns for real clients uh, here in, in San Diego. And again, here are just a few of our alums, uh, somebody who does their global corporate communication for a really large capital group, uh, somebody who started his own agency here in San Diego that focuses uh, a lot on events, um, somebody in uh, a couple people in New York and Washington, D.C., uh, who are just doing a more traditional uh, PR position. So we've got people, again, all over the country um, working uh, for really major companies or going out there and starting our own. There is a lot of student work I can show you. Um, um, if, if we have time, if they're not questions, I'll be happy to show that, but I do want to just allow enough time. Um, but the, the point of all of it is they're creating campaigns. Uh, they're doing real work. The example from PR class is 
they were worked with Meals on Wheels in the fall. And so they created actual campaigns, videos on their website, uh, actually things that went out into the community they were responsible for. So it's not just a theoretical training, but it's applied. And that's true of almost everything. They're building websites. They're creating podcasts. They're, they're doing really innovative um, work uh, in the community, right? That goes back to our core value that we're engaged with the community. So we're not just teaching students and letting them sit in our classroom up on the Mesa, but we're going out into the world um, to make a difference. And part of that is internships. Uh, they're not required, but they're as strongly as encouraged uh, as they can be. Uh, you can get academic credit for it. Um, you can also, of course, take internships outside of class, uh, but that is something we stress highly. We have an internship course, so when you're taking it for credit, uh, there, there's an actual course component to it. We're thinking about creating LinkedIn and how you leverage LinkedIn um, and, and, and things like that to find that next job. And when we're, we have interns all over the city, uh, every major news organization, all the PR fields, ad fields, and then a lot of just smaller groups. Uh, and then we have students all over the country advertising uh, or, or interning at places. And so it's a big part of our curriculum is something we really stress. It's why we have somebody who oversees our internship program. And so that's just an important thing that I wanted to make sure everybody knows. We have a ton of different student organizations that you can participate in. And I think the next Explore SDSU is where we'll talk a little bit more about that student experience. And maybe I'll show some of the student work then. But we have videos to, to give you an introduction to some of these different student organizations. But again, regardless of what your major is, uh, if you're interested in advertising, there's an advertising club. There's a PR club. There are a lot of journalism clubs. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities on campus to work for things like the Daily Aztec. And that's something uh, we really push because uh, I can tell you from meeting our alumni, there's a common thread, regardless of major, of people who are successful got their start at the Daily Aztec. So it's something we really push. Uh, we have Spanish language uh, newspapers. We have the campus radio station. So there are all different types of ways that they can be uh, really engaged. And then outside of the classroom, we really try to create opportunities again for student engagement. We have a webinar series. Every single Friday um, of this semester, we have a different guest speaker who comes in. And so they're talking about their job, their field. So just yesterday, we had uh, the head of corporate social responsibility uh, from Warner Brothers, from Warner Media, talking about her job and how she connects public relations, in this case, to the brand, to actually doing public good. So those are every single Friday, we try to bring in these really interesting speakers. Some are alumni, some are just people uh, who are high profile anywhere in the world. We have alumni career week coming up where we've got panels uh, uh, of speakers. Actually, all those alumni uh, that, I, that I featured earlier, I chose them because they're all on our panels coming up. Uh, and so we really just connect our alumni uh, and our alumni network with our students. We have something called the Screening Circle that we just launched this year. And this is, we call it, it's our book club for the media. So we'll take an interesting series that's going on and it's outside of the classroom where people will get together and have conversations about what they're watching. Uh, we have tons of guest speakers in all our, all our courses and we have created study abroad opportunities for our students as well. And the list of our alumni uh, it really just goes on and on. We have so many successful alumni all over the country. And so when you become one of our students, you don't just become a student for us for her, for four years. Uh, you become a student and we have a relationship for life. So these are all people who stay actively engaged with our school, uh, who students can reach out to, uh, who can ask questions of while they're here, and you, and you begin to build that network. And so that's the, the last little line down there is one day soon, it can be you. Um, um, you know, if you come to SDSU, if you are serious about those pre-major classes, you're not getting C's or anything like that. So you meet those requirements and you get to join us. You're joining uh, a really an elite major, an elite group of alumni. And so that's my uh, quick overview, uh, or tried to be quick overview uh, of the school. I know Alexa has been awesome uh, and Lourdes at answering a lot of the questions in the chat. Um, so I don't know if there are more, you can certainly unmute yourself or if there's anything, uh, Alexa, you want to jump in, but I wanted to allow some time uh, here at the end. Uh, so for any specific questions about the program, 
feel free to just drop it into the chat or um, be bold. Uh, as we tell our students, you can actually unmute yourself. Um, I, I really should be able to and uh, ask your question that way. So could someone with a degree in PR go on to become a creative director? Also, do you know what differentiates creative directors and marketing directors? Alexa, do you want to answer that? Or I'm happy to, uh, you know, I, but I talk a lot. So I like to give other people opportunities. Yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. I mean, I think that the answer is, yeah, I think you certainly could. I think it'll depend on the internships you get as well and how you kind of gear yourself towards that. We do see students in advertising interested in becoming creative directors. Um, perhaps maybe a little bit more than public relations, but you can kind of also, you know, the nice thing about our majors is we have students who maybe are declared as a JMS um, advertising major. They come into San Diego State as a JMS advertising major. You take a couple classes and you're like, you know what, I actually feel like public relations is more my route. You do have some flexibility to change your emphasis once you get here within the first kind of two, two and a half years that you're here. Um, that's a really kind of specific um, position, but I would say I most certainly think you can. And I think that our public relations major will set you up for kind of corporate communication, um, understanding how to speak with your stakeholders. You'll know how to run campaigns. From the creative side, that does tend to seem like it would lean a little bit more towards advertising, but I would say never say never. Um, I don't myself have an exact difference between a creative director and a marketing director. Temple and Dr. Northup, I don't know if you do. Um, but I would say absolutely as a public relations major, you could go into creative directing. I just think it'll also depend on your kind of, um, real world experience, the internships you get, the positions that you land first to get there. Yeah, perfect. I mean, I would say, um, the difference, I'm sure the creative director and a marketing director would be very offended by this, but I think they're very similar positions. Um, and uh, it draws on people from marketing or advertising and PR, the people who are going to have those positions. Um, and so they're very similar. I did see um, another question about uh, how many students are accepted after pre-major is only based on grade. So there are two things that we look at, the grades and those, those pre-major courses. And then there's a spelling and grammar uh, component, which in the past was a one and done test. You came, you took it you passed or you didn't. Um, and, and I'll mention there's always a way that if you don't, if you if you got that C your first semester, like we understand that happens. So there's a way to petition to get into the major, even if you don't have like the specific criteria that we have. But there's also a spelling and grammar program that we use um, that goes through and teaches you everything about grammar in particular and it's it's pretty serious program it takes about 20 hours to get to make your way through it uh can take longer um and all each step along the way there's a little test that you have to take and there are these different mastery exams and so you have to get a certain score on that in order to get admitted so if you get the b's and you get the passing score on that you're automatically admitted um and we change that grammar and spelling test to make it a little bit more fair um, and to provide opportunity uh, for students who don't have a strong background and grammar uh, to have that and still be able to get into the school. Uh, and so that's the purpose of it. I don't, we don't track the exact numbers of how many apply versus how many get in. Um, but anyone who gets that B and anyone who passes it is automatically in and you're automatically good to go. So it's really a matter of focusing on those pre-major courses and then taking the, the spelling and grammar test seriously. I can tell you what often happens is if you wait to the last minute, much like everything in life, you wait to the last minute to do the spelling and grammar, uh, then you just don't have the time to do it and you're not going to get the passing score. Again, you have an opportunity. You can write a petition to be let in, uh, and we do let in quite a few people who don't get that for some reason. Uh, and that's where writing a really strong essay about why you want to be our major uh, can get you in. So even despite that, so we have those things to help us uh, to create uh, a little bit of a gate to get in, but then there are other paths. Um, and there are other ways, even if you don't get in, 
um, there are still paths to graduation. So it's not like you're, you won't graduate in four times. Uh, we've actually created some interesting um, new programs with uh, uh, others on campus. Um, Alexa, I don't know if you've been reading. I haven't been reading. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to answer two of them quickly. So Olivia asked, she's a junior right now, and she asked kind of what you can do to kind of get a head start on those impact and criteria. I love that you're excited about JMS. Love that you're thinking ahead. The Some of the JMS pre-major courses, um, JMS 200, JMS 210, which I know doesn't mean a ton to you right now, but our social media course, our kind of intro to mass media courses are available at a lot of different community colleges. So you would, it would take a little bit of research, but you could take some of those courses as a high school student, maybe the summer before you get here to try to get a couple of those started, but you don't have to do anything until you get here if you don't want to. Um, so for a four year student, um, you you can come in with none of the pre, you know, zero pre-major requirements completed, but if you wanted to have a couple of those under your belt, that would certainly help you um, just kind of have fewer classes to take once you get here. I can't speak to admissions if it would help you at all. We're not involved in admissions, but it can certainly help with your course load, absolutely, and making sure that these are the courses that you like and that this is the right major for you. Um, but I can't speak to likelihood of getting accepted um, in that regard. And then as a transfer student, I had a question, is there any significant difference? Nope, you're just as much of the JMS community either way. We'd love to have you, whether you're here for two years or four years. Our transfer students, uh, in order to be accepted, as you all probably know, you have to have a 3.0 GPA, uh, 3.0 cumulative GPA to even be admitted to San Diego State. So you already have that cumulative GPA requirement done, which is nice. So from there, um, as a transfer student, your very first semester here, you'd be completing all of your pre-major requirements and then you enter into the major your spring semester of your junior year. Whereas for freshmen, uh, four-year students coming in as freshmen, you'd have your freshman and sophomore year to complete those pre-major requirements. Um, but other than that, no difference. You'll be a part of our, um, part of our family either way, whether you're here for two or four. Yes, and another question was about broadcast courses. Uh, so we've got a, a course that's very specific to broadcast, um, of course, but then all of our courses, or a lot of the journalism courses when we're looking at multimedia is about creating those multimedia packages because we find uh, we need our students to be trained in a lot of different things. They're not a lot of what you would say are pure journalism jobs in the old days. In the old days, you get a broadcast career, you stand in front of the camera, someone else is at, holding the camera, someone else is editing that for you, you just stand up, talk, and leave. Those jobs don't exist anymore. You need to be able to edit it, you need to be able to do everything. And so we had infused that into all of our courses is, is gaining all of the skills. So we do have a very specific class for those people who really, I wanna be on camera. So we have that and we're adding some more classes next year. Laura just mentioned, we'll have a sports journalism class. Uh, and we're also gonna add another more advanced broadcast class for those people to just get further experience. And then there are a lot of opportunities on campus. The Daily Aztec has a, sh a news show. Uh, so if you get involved over there, they have a ton of equipment also. Uh, they've got studios over there and so it's a tremendous opportunity just to you know be able to play and experiment on getting that 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 time in front of the camera let's see other questions um do you want to take anything uh alexa so there's about uh if you double major yeah, so Christina, I hopefully I'm, I'm answering your question correctly. If you've already been admitted to San Diego State and you're perhaps an undeclared major, you would want to declare your your major, um, your JMS major, ideally by the end of your freshman year, but you technically have up until the end of your sophomore year to declare, but we would be shooting to have you declared as a JMS pre-major by the end of your sophomore year. If you choose to double major, you're going to be working with obviously two advisors on campus, myself and maybe marketing or communication, poli-sci. Um, and what you would do is you would work with 
that major advisor and then myself, and you'd also work with the Office of Advising Evaluations just to kind of lay out your overall graduation plan because sometimes double majoring, you can graduate in four years. Sometimes it might, or two years. Uh, as a, as a, tr a transfer student, it's a little bit more difficult, but as a four-year student, you can double major. You just have to be really strategic every semester with what classes you're taking. Um, but to your question, it depends what you came in as when you were admitted to San Diego State, but if you want to switch into J MS, we would want to be in communication as soon as possible, but we'd want that done by the end of your um, freshman year, or if you're a transfer student, I would want to meet with you this summer to get you set up so that we can get you hopefully all roaring and ready to go for fall 2021. Yes, and uh, the last uh, most recent question, if you declare journalism media an admission app, does that mean you're in? It means you're one of our pre-majors. So everybody, regardless of whether you're a physics or you're smart and you come in right away in our school as a pre-major, you all have to do those four pre-major courses uh, and the spelling and grammar platform, and then you're admitted. Uh, so if you're really on top of it, you can get admitted even during your sophomore year if you knock out those classes and are focused on that. But that's um, you're not admitted until you're here at SDSU and complete those. And just to answer Emma's question a little bit longer um, in terms of your GPA. So the primary thing we're looking at is the GPA in those four pre-major courses. We do look at the GPA overall, um, but it's those the pre-major courses are the ones we care most about because uh, those are ours um, and we understand you know, not everybody is going to get an A in physics or, you know, there's a large breadth of classes that are required just as a, a student um, at SDSU. And so we look at those four pre-majors in particular. But if you get that C on one and then you get three Bs, let's say your GPA would be a little bit below that 3.0 that's required, that's where you do a petition. And again, our, our goal is not to keep people out of the school. Uh, our goal is to be able to control the enrollment just to make sure that we have these 20 people size classes and we can't have 22 or else we can't get accredited. So we have very specific numbers that we have to control, but we try our best to get students into the school. So sometimes we'll have a ton of journalism applications uh, and fewer media studies maybe. And so we'll say, we can't get you into the journalism program right now, but would you consider media studies? And so you're able to get in that way and still take most of our courses uh, because there is a lot of overlap in, in the different areas. Um, Alexa, I don't know, I see you're typing away if you wanna add anything. No, that sounds good. I just had a question about uh, transfer students, kind of, again, pre-major. So yeah, everyone enters SDSU as a pre-major, including transfer students, even though you might have 60 units already completed. And what will switch you from pre-major to major is the completion of those four pre-major courses, the 3.0 prep for the major GPA, the 3.0 cumulative GPA, and then this grammar and spelling evaluation that we're using called eGUMP. And all of that would be, as a transfer student, all of that would be completed by the end of your first semester here and then your goal would be to enter into the upper division major your spring semester junior year so spring 2022 for you all um, and that would put you on track to graduate in two years as freshmen you're completing all of your pre-major requirements by the end of your sophomore year Awesome. Thank you, Alexa. I know we are running out of time and I think there are things all day for you you all to go to. Uh, I just put my email in there. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you have questions. Uh, I'm always around. Alexa's around. We're all on the website so you can find anybody. Any professors on there will have um, their contact. So feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, we certainly uh, hope uh, you'll come, you'll join us and be one of the next great alumni that we have.